みなさん、こんにちは。Today we're looking at beautiful kanji in Wakata. Okay, let's get going. Now, the first kanji is au or aimas, which means to meet. And if you pronounce it as kai, often it has some sort of meaning、um, associated with meeting or gathering. So let's look at the origin of the story. Under a rooftop, there are two people seeing each other. Okay, one on the inside receiving、uh, with an open arm, the other one on, on the outside, open arm as well, and、um, sitting down, okay, trying to do a sort of embrace. And this is to meet someone. Now, the kanji can be used in the following vocabs. For example, undokai, which means exercise gathering. And undokai is the word we use for sports carnival. Suie taikai. What do you think that means? It's a swimming big gathering, so it's a swimming carnival. And the last one is kaisha. Now we are actually going to look at the second kanji very soon, which is company, kaisha. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. The next kanji is sha or ja. Now this word can mean company, okay, in terms of a,、uh, a business, or it can also mean some sort of shrine. Now, the most original story、um, for this country is about、um, shrines and a、uh, place of worship. So, here's how the story goes. On the left hand side, we have a,、um, a, a sort of、um, table where you、uh, put up offerings for the gods. Okay? The offering can be a candle, can be an urn, can be anything. And it's placed on a stool that has three legs. And on the left hand side, we have a country that represents earth. Because in the ancient times, the most、um, revered god or spirit、um, are the ones governing the earth and therefore our harvest. Therefore, by making o f f e r i n g on a tall、um, pedestal、um, to the gods of earth, we are enshrining them. Okay, so as time goes by, it gets simplified into just a sort of stick figure at the top representing some sort of offering, and then the stool gets simplified with a, a flat top. And three legs. And the right hand side is pretty much do in do yobi. So before the modern、um, version of sha, this is how sha was、uh, used to be written as. But nowadays the left hand side has been changed to a katakana ne. Now, in fact, if you see this katakana ne on the, le- on the left hand side of any kanji,、um, it has something to do, the kanji then has something to do with、um, worship, okay, literally spiritual worship. Okay, so therefore we are worshipping the god of earth, and this is about shrine. Now, these are some of the vocabs you will find the kanji,、uh, this kanji in. Kaisha, which is company. Okay, a people gathering to worship something, it is an association. And as time goes by nowadays, it means、um, company. If you swap the two kanji around, shakai, okay, shakai means society. Okay, it is a, a, a gathering of people who、um, are gathered under an ideology. Okay, so shakai is society. It is also the vocab for social studies, shakai. And lastly, the first country you don't know as yet, but it is jinja. Okay, jinja, the Shinto shrine. In this case, the, this country is pronounced as ja. Okay, let's move on. This kanji, you probably recognize the right hand side already. The right hand side of kanji is also found in words like toki, okay? And on its own, it also means temple. Now, to have or to own or to hold something, we all use this kanji, motsu. If you change it to the motteiru or motteimas, then it becomes to own because you're still、um, in continuation of having that in your possession. So the story goes like this. On the left hand side, we have a、uh, hand symbol. On the right hand side, now the word temple is made out of、um, the, the, the foot at the top and another hand at the bottom. Okay, when you have the foot and the hand working together, you are working hard. And people、um, at temples work very hard to make sure that the place of worship is、um, kept to its、um, utmost standard. And on the left hand side, if you add another hand, you are working extra hard to hold on. To the earnings that you have, got, you have gained from your work. Okay, so from this story, we have the word to hold, to have, or to own, motsu. However, though, 
um, to make life easier, if you think that you can remember the right hand side of the kanji, which is a temple, then all you have to remember is the left hand side, the radical. Okay, the radical looks like sai. Okay, how old are you? Sai. However, it's slightly different. It's thinner and it's not, um, and the, the, the line cut it through diagonally is not as long. The left hand side is the radical for hand. Okay, it's a simplified version of hand. So imagine you're at the temple and you um, and the hand symbol represents like you have ownership over the temple. Okay, so that's to have, to own. Okay, let's continue. Oh, sorry, that's right. Um, the vocab that you'll be using this um, vocab apart from motteiku is kimochi. The way you hold your ki, okay, your energy or your aura is um, the word for feeling. Okay, kimochi, feeling. And we can often use it in kimochi ga ii desu. Okay, you're in the onsen and you feel, oh, this is so comfortable. Then we use the word kimochi ga ii. Okay, you're feeling good. All right. Now, this kanji looks extremely similar to the, the, the previous, previous one, which is mochimas, motsu, to have or to hold. And the only difference is the left hand side. So once again, on the right, we have the temple. On the left, we have a funny looking thing that's like that. Now, that is, in fact, a sort of very morphed picture of an intersection or T-section. So when you wait for someone, okay, you usually tell them to wait at a very distinct landmark. And in the olden times, if you're going to a T, T intersection, you're not sure which direction you are to go, then you will wait for your companions to meet you at the temple. Okay, so just so the left hand side, if it helps, is also the left hand side with ikimas to go. Okay, so ikimas is something to has something to do with traveling, and this also has something to do with traveling. Okay, because you're waiting at the temple so that you can go somewhere. Okay, so ikimas on the left hand side, and temple on the right hand side. Hi, Chatsuki. Now, how about the kan? Uh, oh, sorry, let me go. Um, so let me go to the, this kanji now. It is the kanji for michi, which is road or path. Now, michi is a very interesting kanji because it has two components once again. Okay, the component on the right represents your head. Okay, it's kubi. Kubi, um, nowadays it means neck, but because neck is connected to the most important part of our body, which is the head, so it can mean two things. It can mean your head or your kubi. Now, in fact, in, in Japan, if you get fired, your boss will simply say to you, Anata wa kubi desu. Okay? It doesn't mean you are a head or you are a neck, but it is a um, it is an idiomatic expression to say that your your head is flying. Therefore, you are fired. Okay? Kubi, kubi desu. Now, coming back to this kanji, though. Okay. When you go on the when you go on the road or the path, it is of obviously you traveling down the road. So the road is represented by this really wiggly line with a bit of um, a few branches, okay, branching off into different directions. And your head is represented by this pineapple looking thing, okay. Now, so this pineapple looking thing gets um, changed into something like, you know, with three pieces of hair. And underneath the face, the eyes get simplified into a split line. And then that's your mouth inside the big head. And then the road itself branches into um, three different directions. And then you are following the road until you can figure out which path you're taking. Now, as time goes by, it gets into, um, it changes into a much more angular shape. So now you don't have three pieces of hair, but two. Two pieces of hair, okay, with a horizontal line across, and you're almost like write, you're almost like writing a um, hyaku kanji, except it's not hyaku. You have to add an extra horizontal line inside the hyaku, okay, and that is your head. And then the road is written by having a dot at the top, and then almost like a number three, and then a line that connects to the bottom of your head, indicating the path you're traveling. Now this kanji surprisingly is using using a lot of vocabs. For example, the first word dodo, it just means road. It's just another word saying road. However, in Hokkaido, we also use kanji because Hokkaido literally means ho, uh, which means northern, and kai means sea, and do means road. So the northern ocean road. Okay, 
um, to the Japanese people, the men, people on the mainland, they think they used to think that Hokkaido is named such because it is to the north, it is past the ocean, and it is um, it, it, it gives them inroads into um, unsettled land or, or unclaimed land, because Hokkaido in the past was um, uh, inhabited by indigenous people rather than the current Japanese people. Okay. Now the last vocab is shodo. The art of calligraphy, the art of writing. So therefore, when you talk about all the other sort of um, art of the sword, kendo, it is the same door as well. Judo, it's also the same door. The way of something. Now, how about the way of the god? That's right, it's Shinto. Okay, Shinto, unfortunately, is spelled with T-O-U, okay, without a ten ten. Shinto is the way of the god. It is also this kanji. All right, let's move on. Hi, right. the next kanji is chikai or kin. It means near or close. Now, once again, do you recognize something from the previous kanji? That's right, the road being traveled. Okay, so now once again, we are traveling down the road, but this time we're a bit lazy. I don't want to go all the way around the bend and through, you know, um, and, and just taking like three days to travel there. Instead, I want to cut, uh, make a shortcut by taking out an axe and just ha um, and just hacking down the trees. Okay, so as you hack down the trees, okay, you are making a um, a shortcut towards your destination, and which then brings your distance um, a lot closer than before. So from this concept or this story, we derive the kanji chikai. Now chikai. Um, is used in a few um, words such as chika goro, okay? Goro means about some time, okay? Chika goro means uh, recently, okay? In the recent times. However, though, the key word for this unit is kinjo, okay? The near place. So the place that's near you is your neighborhood. So kinjo is neighborhood. And saikin is recently. And then chikaku no supa means the supermarket nearby. Now, this kanji you have seen before, it is machi. Okay, it's a rice field with a T intersection telling you you have reached the destination of the town. Or alternatively, you can remember it as the rice field, um, but with a signpost on the right hand side telling you the name of the town. Now, another pronunciation that you need to recognize is cho. You probably won't need that until you're 12, okay, but you might as well learn it now. Now, machi and jo, how do you decide when to use it? It's a bit tricky. Most of the time, I would say just pronounce it as machi, okay? But um, there are specific place names in Japan. For example, the Kinshicho uh, suburb near Tokyo. That's where you can find the biggest daiso, okay? That's called Kinshicho. In fact, if you went on the Japan tour and you went to the, um, the disaster prevention center or the fire, um, the fire, uh, where you sort of learned about how to be safe during an earthquake, that is actually located in Kinshicho. Kinshicho. Now, the second kanji, okay, is Jojo. Okay, the 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 Jojo, the second Jo of that kanji is going to be learned later on in year twelve. But Jojo means the leader of the town, which then becomes the uh, the mayor of the town, okay, of of the city. Jojo, okay. All right, do let's keep Okay, the next one is ban. Okay, you have learned this before, but let's do this again. Ban means number. However, another difference you need to know is duty. It has something to do with duty. Because the story goes like this. On top of the rice field, we have some grains of rice. Okay, and then someone is taking, uh, extending their hand out to pick out the grain of rice, and then seed it and then and, and, and scatter it across the rice, uh, the other rice field, so that you can have harvest for the next year. And this is such an important job that this story then uh, becomes the kanji for duty, important duty. Okay, so as time goes by, um, it simply looks like this now. Okay. So 
The verb catch you need to know involved in this country includes deng wabango, which is obvious, okay? But korban as well, okay? Korban means police box. But what exactly is police box? If you remember going back to um, traveling to Japan, sometimes you can actually see korban written around the places. These are small um, stations and sometimes so small, it's literally like a phone booth, okay? That there's a policeman in there and they are on duty to help people in general. So if you get lost, you lost your wallet or you, you see something that happened in the street but you don't want to interfere, you would like the police to be involved, the korban is a place you go to. Even if you lost your passport, you go to the korban. Because in Japan, people are um, educated to bring any lost properties to the nearest korban so that their police system can connect with each other's network and so that any lost found can be found immediately. Okay? All right, the, the last word is torban. Now, remember in year seven or eight when you when you did Japanese, there was a torban system? That's right, that's a class monitor, isn't it? Now, torban literally means the person in charge. It can be any kind of torban. Okay, imagine you're in, in, in um, Japanese high school and you and you happen to be the soji torban, then your job is you're in charge of cleaning. Okay, the same thing with other torban, like kyushoku torban, which is um, lunch provision torban. Okay, you're in charge of distributing lunch. So torban literally means any kind of, um, literally means a person in charge. Okay, let's move on. Now these kinds, of, again, we have the road, the road, um, um, symbol, okay, or shall we call that radical? Like the radical that represents the roads. And on the right hand side, is when things get interesting, okay, on the right hand side, we have a person, a really big, buffy person who's trying to barge through a gate, okay, or a fence, okay, because he's trying to go through, he's trying to go somewhere. And this is a kanji for going through. And nowadays, it can also mean to commute or go alone something, okay. So as time goes by, the big bulky person becomes a bit of like a, a upside down triangle shape and then a line through um, the gate. Now this kanji can be pronounced in different ways. Kayou or kayoimasu, which means to commute. Kakko ni kayoteimasu. Okay, I, I, I'm attending a school. If you pronounce it as torimasu, it can mean two things. One is to go through something, okay? I'm going to go through the door, go under the door. But if you use tori, it means road. Now the last pronunciation, which is tsu, okay, is used for words like uh, inter uh, interpreter, tsu yaku. And also it is also used in, um, for example, someone who is an expert in Japan. We, we then call them nihon tsu. Okay, someone who is an expert in, um, let's say, um, all things manga. Okay, manga tsu. Okay, so the example I've given you is Tanuki Dori. Okay, Tanuki Dori is a famous shopping district in Asa near Asakusa, which means uh, the Tanuki Street. And Tanuki, if you if you know, is the um, the Japanese word for raccoon dogs. Okay, so it's a very cute name for a street. Tanuki Dori. The second kanji is Tsu Yaku, which is interpreter or interpret. The last one is Tsu Gaku Jikan. Okay, it's a very big word, which means the time it takes for you to commute to school. Okay, so Tsu Gaku Jikan wa Sanjupun desu. You're saying that it takes me 30 minutes to go to school. Okay, all right, let's move on. Yeah. This is the um, the suffix for shops, okay? We tend not to use it on its own. It's always used with something. Now, the story is actually quite morbid where this kanji comes from, okay? You have a, um, a rooftop, okay? And then a line on the left-hand side. And that particular rooftop is often for um, places where people have to place a corpse or dead body in. And in the ancient times, how do they decide, okay? Because Seriously, everyone, I don't think anyone really wants, um, really, really wants a dead body in their house. So therefore, in the olden time, the villagers would then decide, okay, we are going to shoot an arrow uh, blindly, blindfolded, 
okay, from somewhere in the middle of the town. And then wherever, uh, wherever the arrow lands, that's the house where we're going to place the dead body in, okay? So you see under the rooftop, we have a, um, an arrow pointing down on the earth. And as time goes by, okay, the rooftop goes in, um, changes its shape to, light, to that. And the rooftop now is actually the radical for dead body, corpse, corpses. Okay, so if you see that, kind, see that radical, it's usually to do with dead body. And the arrow gets um, drawn into something that's a little bit complicated, but as time goes, on, goes by, it gets simplified into a sort of triangular looking thing. And then we have the earth kanji, doyobi no do, underneath to represent that's where, um, that's where the arrow makes contact with, okay, the arrow making contact with the ground. So therefore, okay, for some reason, that morbid story turns into a, uh, a kanji that simply represents a, a, another, it's another word for a building or, or a housing um, structure, okay? So, examples of the, of the kanji is honya, which is a bookshop, panya, bakery, and the last one is pronounced oku, oku jo, okay? Above the house, which means roof. Okay, so okujo means roof or rooftop. All right, let's move on. Ikimasu. All right, now this kanji is for shop and store. We pronounce it as mise. Now, the story goes, okay, we have a rooftop, okay, and we have a person inside who has a huge mouth. Now, the reason why you need a huge mouth inside that's uh, underneath that rooftop is because you have to shout out, okay, all these phrases to attract customers to your shops. Irashitaimase! Okay, oishii desu yo! Okay, so it's a person with a huge mouth, okay, which represents large, um, a huge volume, okay, to say, hey, come in, I'm going to sell stuff, okay, we, are, we, we have fantastic goods for you. As time goes by, the rooftop, the pointed rooftop then turns into a flat one with a stick sticking up to tell you that it used to be pointed, okay? And we still have the back of the shop, okay, to the left, and the front of the shop to the right is open for the customers. And the person with the big mouth then turns into a sort of almost like a stiff figure, extending the hand out and, st uh, and on top of a box. Now, this kanji is pronounced as ten when you combine with other words, such as kisaten. Kisa means drinking tea, okay? Kisaten, therefore, is a shop that you drink tea. But that was in the olden times. Nowadays, we just refer to them as cafes. Okay, so therefore, kisaten is cafe. Now, on, the, on that note, if you add manga kisa, and we drop the ten, manga kisa, then we're talking about manga cafe. All right, the second vocab, ten in. Okay, in is like bu in, kaisha in. It's a member of something. So therefore, ten in is a member of a shop. And therefore, it means shop assistant. Hi, Tewatsuki Ikimasu. Next word. Oh, eki. It's a very small word, but a lot of writing. Now, eki has two parts. Okay, the right-hand side of the kanji uh, looks a little bit like the dead corpse, isn't it? That's right. However, it's got an extra thing. So that tells you it's not a radical for, dead, um, for, for, for houses that houses uh, dead people. But... It is just another house that houses things other than a human. In this case, it is housing animals, okay? So on the right-hand side, it simply means it is a housing structure for animals. On the left-hand side, however, though, we have a picture of a horse, okay? Because in the olden time, before the times of cars and automobiles and trains, uh, the main transport was, um, the main transport would be horses. Okay, so therefore this is a housing structure for horses. And the horse kanji, okay, develops from these um, pictures. So it's a bit complicated, but I hope that showing you the picture, it helps you remem remember the shape of horse. Now make sure you follow the stroke order strictly to write horse, okay, so that you get the right number of um, lines for the mane of the horse and also for the little four dots that represent the legs of the horse. Okay, now this kanji is pretty straightforward, it's just pronounced eki, 
The only other time I will probably see this combined with another kanji is uh, ekimae. Okay, we often use this to represent this is in front of the station. Okay, ekimae, uh, ekimae de mat, um, machimasho. Okay, that's way in front of the station. Hai, dewa tsukikimasu. Okay, this is the kanji for God. We pronounce it as kami. Now, kami, once again, you will notice that left hand side, we have seen that before, haven't we? In sha, in shrine. That's right. So, when you see that left hand side, it means that it has something to do with um, worship. Okay, so this is how the story came by. So, once again, we have offering on top on the pedestal. But for what God this time? This time it is for God from heaven. And they are represented by the thunder. The thunder that goes through and we are trying to embrace or shall we say catch it with our hands from the both sides okay so we're trying to catch the the message from God as we offer um, our precious harvest to the gods okay so the thunder in the olden time Kaminari thunder was considered a message from God okay so we offer it to the gods and we're trying to catch the message in the form of thunder so as time goes by, the two hands join together and they look almost like a rice paddy and the thunder goes just go straight through the rice paddy. Okay, now pronunciation wise, okay, you need to know that this kanji on its own is kami, okay, but when you combine with other kanji like shinto, okay, and jinja, the pronunciation changes, okay, shinto and jinja. Now, this is a very complicated kanji. In fact, for HSC, this is a recognition only kanji, which means that you don't have to be able to write it, but you do need to be able to read it or recognize it in reading. All right. Now, firstly, do you already recognize two components in this kanji? I hope you notice there is a tree and there is some sort of water underneath. So that leaves us the last element, which is the one at the top right quadrant. That is, in fact, the kanji for a big fat sheep. Okay. So the story goes that a, a sheep comes to the forest and once and then um, as it goes to the water or the river to drink water, it notices it looks beautiful. Okay. You notice oh, I've got a huge horn and a tree behind me. My gosh, I look awesome. I look amazing. Okay. So human okay of course human being no hu human noticed that the sheep is looking into the um the water being fascinated by the whole thing they decided to use that picture to represent the word style manner or appearance okay so this kanji originally means uh, appearance style or manner but as time goes by somehow we use it to also say um to, to use it as a polite suffix for names so this is how the kanji evolved we have tree on the left hand side a sheep on the right hand side so it's got two horns and to represent its fluffy body we need three lines going across like to represent how fluffy it is a line going through which is the, the spine of the sheep and underneath we have the water okay that the sheep is looking down at and this kanji is pronounced sama for example kami sama we can address a person very politely by saying Yamada sama, Honda sama. Now, if you repeat the kanji twice, sama zamana, okay, sama zamana, it's the same meaning as iro iro na, okay, because we know iro iro means various, it comes from the kanji color, isn't it? And if we know sama on its own means style or manner or appearance, if there are many styles, many manners, and many appearances, that means various as well. So sama zamana. Now the other pronunciation, which is in blue, um, says that this country is pronounced as yo. However, though you don't need to know that if you're only doing continuous um, continuous Japanese. Okay. For those people who are thinking about doing extension Japanese, you do need to know the pronunciation yo, because then we use it in words such as yours. Okay, uh, which means the look of something. All right, let's move on. This is our last kanji. And once again, this is a recognition only kanji because it is hardly ever used in our daily life. 
In fact, unless you live in Japan, you probably wouldn't be using it because this is the kanji we use to say ward or section when we talk about someone's address. So the kanji comes from the idea of a big box and then to divide it into smaller sections, we put smaller boxes inside it. And as time goes by, people can't be bothered drawing three boxes inside a big box. They just thought, I'm just going to do, do an X, do a cross to represent that, yeah, it's been divided into different sections. So this kanji um, means division, okay, and therefore it, it is used to mean section or ward. Now, the, there are a few words in Tokyo that you might have heard of. Sumida ku, okay, ku is the pronunciation of the kanji. It's the sumida uh, ward, and also meguro ku, the meguro ward. So next time if you look at the, um, the map of Tokyo and you notice that there's a different wards, then if you look at the name in kanji, you will definitely find this kanji in there. So that's it for Unit 4. Jump in and work on your kanji practice. Hi, see you